three, two, one. Welcome to the David Dog Trainer Podcast, episode 162. Yep. Here we are. You being joined by uh, Kylie. Oh, you better turn me down. I can already tell. <laughs> turn you down? Yeah, I'm like... You're peeking. I'm peeking. Ooh, you're peeking. I'll turn it... I'll, I'll balance it out later. Don't you worry. Okay. I'm just <laughs> hey, let me... I'll turn it down just a touch. There we go. How's that? Yeah. Is that better? Maybe I'm just not used to this old... <laughs> this old technology we have over here. Well, yeah, the difference in the mics is so apparent. I was talking to Steve about it, and he was like, yeah, like this one is like so not hot. Yeah. And this one is like so hot. Yeah. So, very, very yeah. hot. 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 Too hot. <laughs> I have the sexy hot mic. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> I, exactly. <laughs> yeah. My mic's hot. And you're not. <laughs> so, yeah, we're being joined by Kylene today. Kylene is uh, in town doing a shadow program. How are you? Really good. Really you good? good? Yeah. Cool. It's, a good, um, it's good because it's not eight in the morning. It's at, <laughs> you said we're, we're recording in the morning. I'm like, oh, how early? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we always yeah. are like ambitious to try to do early episodes. Like every now and then we'll start at like nine. You know, mm-hmm. and I think yeah. every now and then we've also said like, oh, maybe we'll start at eight. But oh, like that's my brain just doesn't function that early. No, no. I kind of just need to settle in. <clears throat> just I have like a 45 minute drive to work sometimes and that's just that 45 minutes yeah Jesus. i work i'm i'm in troy but i work out in columbia county upstate new york yeah. so a lot of it is a bit mm-hmm. of a drive talk a little closer cl- yeah i was gonna say there you hey, go. remember you could gotta kiss the mic oh, i can actually yeah yeah you, yeah, can, you move can move it if you need great yeah okay. yeah but Hello. yeah try to keep it like really yeah super close Super you can close. hear the difference. Like if you go here versus if you go here versus Absolutely. if you go here versus if you go here. I don't want to spit all over my mic. It's fine. It's fine. It's my mic. I'm learning the podcast basics here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my usual right. mic, so I, I, I'll be all right. Oh, okay. You can spit on it. Okay. <laughs> is what you were saying. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Kylene, tell, uh, you know, I've heard your story now twice. Twice. Josh has heard it zero twice. times. Twice. The podcast okay. has heard it zero times. Tell everybody okay. a little bit about yourself. Tell yeah. everybody a little bit about what you're doing up here and... You know, take take it away. Okay. That's a lot. Okay. I'll tell Josh. Okay. <laughs> tell Josh. Yeah. Um, so I'm I've been training dogs about eight years now. Um, four of those were with a lot of um mentors and just support. And the last four years has been just me. Um just me figuring out what really matters to me, mm-hmm. um, what mm-hmm. things I want to bring to people. It's distilling everything that everyone has kind of just packed my brain with. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And it's been really great because my, like the pandemic, I think kind of helped me mm-hmm. um, kind of just sit with myself and sit with all of that information um, and just decide who I wanted to be as a dog trainer cool. um, and what things I wanted to focus on. So that's kind of why I came to David. I mean, I, I can go to my backstory in a sec, but like just coming to sure. David was, I started to see what you guys were doing and it's so much aligned with kind of where I've ended up. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I know I need to kind of just pare things down and really just do what's best for the owner and what's best for the dog and what makes them happy. Um, so my big focus, my entire time training has been puppies. I'm the puppy. (laughs) I'm, I love preventing behavior problems. Mm. Um, so basically I got into dog training because I was actually, I started school in psychology and so I have a bachelor oh, really? in psychology. I didn't know that. Yeah. Me. So that's how I got really into uh, Tyler Muto because he studied yeah, yeah, psychology. Yeah. So mm. I found him from my my pit bull that I ended up with when I was in college, my boyfriend and I at the time took in this pit bull and she was a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a nervous wreck, bad with dogs, bad with people. Um, so that kind of started my journey in like, I'm going to help this dog. I'm going to do whatever I have to do. Um, it's not an option to send her to the shelter and have her put down yeah just, what were some of the things that you were having a hard time like what what was this dog like as a you know was that your first dog um so my family had always had dogs we actually had great danes oh really yeah, yeah. um so my we had a couple great danes when i was growing up um we also had a min pin we had mm-hmm. a great dane a min pin at the same time which was pretty funny <laughs> yeah um <laughs> she was a little bitch <laughs> she was great though yeah. um a lot of personality the great dane wasn't but um 
yet that was my first, first personal, personal dog, dog. Yep, yeah, yeah. that I was responsible for. Um, and we had no dogs at the time. Our great Dane had passed a long way like before that. Yeah. And so basically it was, I had to convince my mom to let a pit bull live in our house. And my you mom know, was hilarious. like, no pit bulls. I had to do the same thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I still lived at home when I got Vera. And um, yeah, same deal. I remember seeing, you know, the pictures of her on the shelter uh, website and just being like, damn, like that's the dog that I want. Right. Mm-hmm. And I kind of knew I wanted like a pity or a pity <clears throat> mix just because yeah. I think the the community I was hanging out with at the time was like really into like rescue and oh, like yeah. pit bulls and yeah. stuff like that. They were packed with pit bulls. Yeah. And I literally remember like we never had dogs growing up. My parents never had dogs. Like my dad yeah. had like a little fluffy dog when he was like younger and that was <laughs> it. <laughs> so like we were a very like dog averse family and I remember showing them this picture and being like, yeah, I want to get this dog. And they were like, absolutely nah. fucking not. <laughs> so not only were they not dog people, but you're like, I'm going to introduce were the not dog that everybody people. is biased against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to convince them. Yeah, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. Like, I remember showing him a picture. I was like, Dad, does this dog look scared to you? And he's like, looks like it could be. And it was like, I don't know if I've <laughs> ever shown you, like, the pictures of Vera from the shelter, but she was like a little, like, three Aww. and a half, four month old fucking puppy. Like the <laughs> cutest picture yeah. you'd ever see in your life. And then I remember like, I t- had to take him to the shelter to go see her. And he's like, mm, we're going to get that dog, you know? Like, Cause she was just like so adorable. And now it's like, literally like he would like die for that dog. <laughs> yeah. literally. <laughs> yeah. Like when you guys go out of town, they take beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, sorry. That's, that's just hilarious. Cause yeah, I had to do the exact the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I was like, I am going to change my mother's mind. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Watch me. What was that um, process like for you? That Did was, it take a lot of convincing? So that was a sneaky transition. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my poor, my dog, uh, because my boyfriend at the time, his sister found her in Hartford, Connecticut. She just mm-hmm. picked her up off the street. They ended up putting her in her dad's garage and just fed her for a while in the garage. Mm -hmm. Um, And that transitioned to me taking her field trips over to my house, just on and off. My boyfriend on and off. Um, We'd come over and then she'd stay for a day (laughs) and then she'd stay for two days. And so it eventually just turned into she's just here. (laughs) And my mom was like, yeah, I think she saw that like I was genuinely serious about this dog mattered to me and she knows that when I get my mind set on something, I obsessively research. I, I'm like, I'm going to sure. do this. I'm going to do it good, do it well. Mm-hmm. Um, like anything. I'm like, I, I may not know what to do, but I'm going to figure out what to do. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. basically that led me. Um, and at the time I was working in a psychiatric ward because psychology. So that was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then that kind of just transitioned to um, eventually after college. So she ended. She was still living with us. I was kind of just doing everything on my own. And eventually we knew we had to move out to Milwaukee mm. um, because my boyfriend got a job after college. And I'm like, oh, no, we live in a suburb. Yeah. And we're about to move into the thick of the city Yeah. Um, in this apartment complex that was five floors and it had an elevator. And I'm like, how am I going to get this dog <laughs> in this elevator without like having her react? Um, so I took her to Tyler Mudo. Yeah. Um, and that was like nine. It was 2015. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So I actually just looked in my old emails and the information that I was exchanging back and forth with them. Yeah. Um, was like May 2015. Like looking back on that is crazy. Yeah. Um, and I was like, board and train. Um, I drove out to Buffalo from Connecticut and was like, you're the, I don't, you know, I don't care about anybody close to me. You're the guy. You're the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as soon as I dropped him, dropped her off, I just got into the like, oh, like, you, you know, you studied psychology? Oh, I studied psychology. Um, I just, I find this dog so interesting. I find these problems that she's having interesting. Um, and like, I just want to do his best for her. So basically... He got her trained up um, and they did the go home lesson. And I'm like, I want to do this. I want to do this stuff. This yeah. is so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I could nice. sit here for 10 hours. Like the go home lesson isn't long enough. Yeah. Um, but I got her back to Milwaukee. And, and basically from Milwaukee, I got a job at a vet clinic um, when I got there. And I made every connection I possibly could. I started going to seminars. I brought her to Tyler's seminar. I think it was like principles of pressure. It was mm-hmm. like an e collar 
Yeah. Um, seminar That's funny. Newberg. I remember when he did the principles of really? pressure, like seminar kind of thing. Cause I think he did it in a couple of different places. Yeah. Yeah. We were, we were at Learburg. So that was, I was, I was really fortunate to have them so close. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's where I started. I, I didn't know, you know, they say like, if you don't know what to do, just do something. Sure. Like just yeah, start. Oh, for sure. mm-hmm. Yeah. So just do something. I'm like, I just have to do something. So that meant seminars. And when I go to seminars, I'm talking with people and, and all of a sudden they're like, I meet a few women. I think I met my friend, Sarah, who is a dog trainer Mm -hmm. and she trained diabetic alert service dog puppies for Mm. this breeder. Um, and she's like, you should join our Facebook. Like we have a, um, a dog training Facebook group, uh, Wisconsin dog trainers, Facebook group. So she was in that as well. Mm. So then I kind of got that in because I had to be invited. Um, so I was like invited to that <coughs> and basically got my puppy connection there because Sarah like vouched for me like she's great. I think you should let her train some of the puppies. <laughs> and really my job was to just socialize the puppies, get them on their schedule, get them crate trained, get them kind of bomb proof. Mm. Um, and I'd return them to her after three months or so. And then she would do the diabetic alert training. But what was super exciting for me is that I wanted to learn the diabetic alert training on mm-hmm. one of the last puppies that I did with, her, like did out in Wisconsin and she showed me how to do it. And I walked through and did my own, which was like a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> it was a big deal. Awesome. It was cool. Um, how many times my boyfriend had to put someone's spit in his sock? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, do I have to? I'm like, it's in a container. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that got me really on my puppy journey. And eventually those those puppies, their families were like, hey, I have a family member and they have a puppy. They're not a service dog, but like they're really interested in just like having you go through the tough puppy stuff and then yeah. have a pre-trained dog. Yeah, yeah. So I started doing that um, and I would bring all those dogs to the vet clinic. Um, I got them like anywhere I went. I was able to do that. So the vet clinic, they were amazing, super helpful. Um, and then I started really connecting with a woman who I wanted to take care of my dog because my dog, I didn't trust anyone to handle her other than a trainer. Yeah. Um, because I know she's a great dog, but I also know that in the wrong hands, like I didn't want an issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I looked her up and I was like, please take care of my dog. She's been through a board and train with Tyler. And she was like, oh, okay, absolutely. Like <laughs> I'll take the dog. So then that basically ended up me making more connections with her and wanting her to be like my mentor. Um, yeah, long story short, she ended up, starting a board and train business. She had her own, but she paired up with somebody else and they started the board and train business and I started working for her and eventually left and went up to the Berkshires. So I stopped working for that company because I... <laughs> time it, to leave. Time, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There we go. It, it was time. <laughs> time to keep I, I learned a lot. Yeah. Um, but again, it was time for me to just take that next step like on yeah. my own. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to do things the quality that yeah. I wanted. It could be in really that tough to, it could be really tough to be an employee at a new growing business, you know, yeah. because like I'm... there's so much changing, there's so much figuring things out and stuff yeah. like that. And like the inconsistencies that happen on a day to day basis, like for the employees can be really hard on them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I know that yeah. from personal experience, like when I started Heights and then when I started Miracle, it was like so much figuring things out and I could see as we were going through like a rough patch of we got to solve this problem, we got to do this thing. I could see how that directly impacted the employees, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's a, you know, in some cases it's like, it's time. If we want to continue growing yourself, yes, you have to go somewhere a little bit more established or you need to seek out more concise knowledge from somewhere, you know? Yeah. And I yeah. think that that's an important way to kind of look at it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think there was, there was a lot of, so much potential in yeah. that mm-hmm. um we did a structured daycare program so it was great because the daycares around us just had a free-for-all nutso 50 dogs that it you know mm-hmm. um but our, our daycare was a continuation of our board and train yeah. of like a structure that we followed um i was able to so i i love that i love that growth of like we came up with a lot of good ideas to just keep the dogs progressing and have it be beneficial to them instead of chaos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then they, they allowed me to do like private puppy lesson. Like 
if you know I wanted to I'm like I'm really I'm the puppy person like whatever you want to do with puppies I want to lead that like I want to do that yeah and I got my like I did my own little puppy class um and I just yeah I'm just really passionate about it because I know that my dog struggled with so much and I know that if I had her like as a puppy regardless like her genetics her the dog that she is is who she is yeah but I know that if I was able to kind of prevent a lot of that and to also give her good experience good learning experiences Mm -hmm. and prevent the rehearsal of like of just all that stuff that creates the behavior issues Mm -hmm. of like i just want to do that for people i want people to enjoy it like Mm. enjoy their puppy and not have to send their dog to be like quote unquote fixed yeah because they're (laughs) true you know yeah Um, yeah there's nothing worse than like you know getting this puppy thinking it's gonna be like the greatest experience in the world (laughs) yeah and then just Uh, ripping your absolute fucking hair out because like it's so stressful like the lack it's like when you like it's probably like when people have a baby it's like the lack of sleep because like the dog is just doing so horribly in the crate constantly cleaning up accents in the house because you just don't understand how to set good structure for the dog or like Mm -hmm. Dude, puppy teeth, <laughs> like, don't get me started on, like, puppy biting. Teeth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. their freaking God. teeth are, like, razor blades. Needles, yeah. Their nails are, like, freaking, like, daggers because they're so sharp and pointy initially. Like, it really, for as awesome as it can be, if you yeah. don't know what you're doing, it could be absolute torture. Yeah. Torture. Yeah. I, I think that's been a difficult thing for me to... Well, not lately, but early on, mm-hmm. um, because those things just came so yeah. like just I'm like they're just natural to me. I'm like, mm-hmm. why would you let them do that? Why would you leave them alone? Um, all <coughs> yeah. those, so all those things uh, were for even, sure. Yeah, even when I was a new <laughs> trainer and I technically never learned how to raise a puppy. Yeah, uh-huh. I just did those things yeah. because I'm like, well, you create them, you create a structure. Uh-huh. If you just let them drink a ton of water. And mm-hmm. you let them run around, they're gonna have to pee. Yeah. Um, so all those things I kind of I think I just like kind of naturally did. Mm-hmm. I realize like you have to have empathy for the you know, of what a struggle it yeah. is if you don't have those like structures in place and and things like that. So my question yeah. for you is did you naturally always have that that, you know, kind of understanding of like I do this, I do that, you know, whatever, or you know, the other kind of coincidence to that is that like your first experience with owning a personal dog was pretty much right away seeking out training because of problems that you were having. So, or was it just like Ah. right at the beginning, you were instilled really important habits of how to fix behaviors. So everything moving forward was you looking at things like, I want to prevent that from happening again. So it's just common sense. I would do these things. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it was a combination. You're you're right. It's interesting to think that of like of the background that I had, which is how my family raised dogs. Sure. Yeah. Because um, I guess it does go back further to that, too. Yeah. And and while my mom was never like she never like formally trained the dogs, um, it was a structure that did exist of I'm a human and you're a dog. Yeah. So we put you in the crate. We have a schedule. You don't work. You know, we don't work on the dogs. The dogs work around us. Yes. Um. So that I think I always had in my mind and how my mom raised like just in general. Yeah. That structure. That's a great um, point too. Yeah. Like, you know, like just the, so much of it really is like a mentality more than a understanding of how to do things. Yeah. You know? Like exactly. It's a way of thinking about things. Yeah. And also I think what you said of when I, when I got the training on how to deal with a dog that had problems. I, you're right. I probably, I was able to work backwards and be like, well, if this is the problem, how do I prevent that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can, I should do this. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably kind of how it came, but overall I need to understand too, that not everybody has the same experiences as me. Mm -hmm. Not everybody thought about things that way. Not everybody, we're all in different stages yep. of things. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I come in now with people of you're just at a different stage yep. and mm-hmm. you care about different things than I care about. And you've learned different things and your dogs, when you were young, what was the example of how your family raised and handled dogs? Yeah. Did you have dogs? You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. thinking about all those things is really yeah. working into my training now. 
Yeah, because even if I were to look at, like, myself not having grown up with dogs, like, I still grew up with the, like, being taught, like, hey, that's a dog. That's not a toy over there, yeah. right? Respect yeah. the it's dog. It's not a human, yeah. right? It's a dog, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, that was taught to me in the sense of, like, if I wanted to pet a dog, you know, like, what to do with it. I share the story all the time about how one of my friend's dogs bit me growing up. And, you know, how my parents told me, like, it was totally my fault. Like, I was <clears> pestering <throat> this dog on a hot summer day that was, like, out on the patio that probably just wanted to go inside. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, there are so many examples of just, like, teaching you to view it as an animal and not as a human being. And then on top of that, just, like, the personality type of who you are, like, I think that, yeah, some people are just significantly more permissive than others, you know, where other people like just don't have an issue with communicating a boundary, right? And if you could see it as a dog and you could be the type of person that is okay with communicating a boundary, like you'll almost never run into big issues because it's like those are the core foundations of leadership, of guidance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that makes me think of... There's always this like old guy on the street who's just dog follows him everywhere. <clears throat> yeah. And he's never yeah, yeah, sent yeah. the dog to a trainer. Yeah. He's never, he's mm-hmm. just like, Rocky. Yeah. You do what I say. And the dog's 100%. like, hell yeah, man. Yeah. I love yeah. you. Whatever you want. Yeah. Like, it's just, a, I remember looking at those relations. Like I looked at those things as kids and I was like, that's great. I love that. I love mm-hmm. seeing, I've always been interested in relationships. It's why psychology is like, yeah, was thing. interesting. Yeah. yeah. And relationships. I saw that as a kid and I was like, that's a beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so, it was, it was, it's beautiful to see an animal who doesn't know your language, know your language. Like you were able to create mm-hmm. a system of communication with that dog mm-hmm. that is meaningful and, and they just want to be with you mm-hmm. yeah. because you offer something like that. Um, totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So going back to your first dog, you got your pit bull that you wound up sending to training. So what were like, like when you first got that dog, what were like the first signs that you were like, oh my God, like things are a little out of control with this dog. You know, like what were some of the, what was your first experience in growing into realizing like, wow, like I have a difficult problematic dog right now. Okay. <laughs> um, so she was just out <clears throat> in my mom's house one time and she had lived there for maybe a couple of weeks and we just had a guest come to the door. Mm-hmm. And as soon as they came to the door, <laughs> she was like, whoa, 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 ah, backing up, freaking yeah. out, s- staring left and right. Like, Oh my God, yeah. I'm in f- like, what do I do? Yeah. And she expressed her anal glands. Yeah. Yeah. She, <laughs> I was like, Oh no, She's absolutely. This terrified. is so embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. She just didn't. And it was that moment where like, she was just in panic and I'm like, this cannot, this can't happen. Yeah. Uh, the other thing was, is she was leash reactive. Yeah. Mm. So of course we started out like my boyfriend got her like a nice harness (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) and leash. And we started walking her and realized that she would throw a fit about a dog. Yeah. So it was just that combination of seeing these things sure. where I'm like, that's not because I always, cause I would be a kid walking a great Dan on a prong collar through the neighborhood yeah. and he just trotting next to me. I'm like, this is how walking a dog should be. Yeah. I'm currently walking this dog and this is how not, not yeah. <laughs> this is not how yeah. it's going. Not yeah. <laughs> how I wanted it to go. And uh, this is not how I would like it to continue. But mostly is that I saw that she was emotionally severely stressed. <laughs> like she was, she wasn't able to handle those situations and I couldn't make her feel like safe yeah. <laughs> mm. or comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm perfectly fine with like, I'm not a super softy. If anything, I, I veer towards the opposite of, <laughs> of that, <laughs> of like, I'm okay. I, I was okay with her going through stress, but I wanted it to lead her to a better <laughs> yeah. state yeah. of mind. Yes. Yeah. Not, not Let just like perpetual contain. stress. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Not perpetual. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, she's probably going to be really stressed, of course, going through a board sure. train, moving with us, mm-hmm. but these are going to take her hopefully out on the other side of that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so so you realized all that stuff very early on. How long was it from when you got the dog versus, or to when you sent the dog to training? Do you remember? I bet it was like two years. Like two, two years. years. So I was doing things with her on my own. I was mm-hmm. learning from Tyler's videos. I Got was it. learning from, mm. so remember like Jeff Gelman, Sean <laughs> O'Shea. Yep, yep. It was that prime time. It was like the big four or whatever. Oh, the big yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. 
Um, when I was younger, I I also watched probably every Caesar Milan episode yep. you can imagine. I'm like this guy. <laughs> yeah. My guy. Um, but it, yeah, I think it's sometimes for trainers, it's that typical origin story of like, oh yeah, well first I started with Caesar. Yeah. Then I started with the Big Four. You know, Jeff Gelman was like right there in Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, and he was an option too. Yeah. Like for he was closer, and yeah. then I was like out to Buffalo. But mm-hmm. I respected a lot of the things that he was doing sure. too. But. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes it's just like a personal thing with a train too. Yeah. Tyler yeah. making those decisions. Oh, yeah. At the time, Tyler really brought a different spin to things. Mm. You know, like a lot of the other like trainers that were like up and coming, like Sean and Jeff and all those guys, they had a very traditional style to things, you yeah. know? And same deal. I've got I've got no issue with it or anything. Like I've you know, I I like Jeff, I like Sean, I like I like all those guys. But like there was nothing really that new about it aside from they were making a lot of content about it that was like getting yes. out to the public and they were trying to educate people and stuff and that was great but the training itself there was nothing dramatically new um, Tyler was really trying to push the envelope with what you could do with the training I think you know I think he was yes. really trying to merge a lot of the worlds you know of like the clicker trainers and the force free and the sport world and then the balance world and then the guys like Sean and Jack you know what I mean yeah. and, and I, I I remember the same deal like when I first found him I found him through same deal I think it was the the Learberg's leash reactivity course when they put it out you know and I remember just watching it and the way he delivered information I was like this guy isn't just somebody that's making really good videos this guy is really intelligent mm. very you know yes. and like really like like just just inquisitive and very well spoken and stuff and that's what led me to him as well so, yeah yeah it's a type of yeah, it's that type of person where technically I know there are a lot of people who could get my dog trained. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I was looking for a type of thought process of I just yeah. want to always strive to do better mm-hmm. and think about how I'm doing it. Yeah. What is best? How is it going to be better for the owner, better for the dog? How am I going to learn? Yeah. And I'm sure even like all of us like and Tyler like looks back and saying like I do things differently of now. Yeah, but it's yeah. been an evolution that is, <clears throat> you know, yeah. It takes you to where you're at. We were talking about it, I think, yesterday when we were having like our trainers meeting and when we were, I don't, I don't remember specifically what we were talking about, but I was talking about like putting all of our programs and things we offer like under a microscope constantly and being able I, to look I at loved that. improving yeah, yeah. those types of things. Yeah. And I just feel like not enough people are willing to do that. It's like a lot of people kind of live by the philosophy of like, if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it, it. Yeah. you know, which is important. Don't get yeah. me wrong. You have to balance that sometimes because yeah. there are some things where it's like, hey, this is working. Let's not fuck with it too much. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hey. But you can't be just so yes. hang on to Blind things so to the rest. tightly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. So. That's why like I love the trainer meetings too. Yeah. Because it's like everyone has something to kind of offer of like because they're the ones with the boots on the ground. That's like it. this just isn't working and I think I have an idea about how to tweak that. Yeah. And you just have, you know. Yeah, it's, it is it's, really cool. That's one of my favorite things to do for sure. Yeah. So, okay, so you got connected with Tyler. You went there. So what I'm curious then is, one, prior to going to training, talk a little bit about being an owner. Because at the time, you were just a dog owner dog, that had a yes. really difficult dog, yes. right? And I think sometimes trainers have a very challenging time being able to relate to their clients' emotions, something else that we talked about yesterday of like the empathy side of things, yes. of really getting how hard it can be on somebody, right? Yeah. Um, and I think you're in a unique position where because you lived it, right, with a difficult dog, you're going to be able to relate to clients more whether you stay in a puppy field of telling them, yo, like I've seen how bad it can get. So let's make sure we do this right initially. Or if you wind up helping with behavioral modification cases, but I want, I want you to kind of talk a little bit about, yeah, being an owner with a really difficult dog and like what that was like. Oh, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I, I'm like tearing up right now. <laughs> yeah, Sure. Of, of, <clears throat> of just remembering the stress. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like taking me to a moment. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm in therapy. Um, <laughs> I get it. I'll, well, I'll share. So, oh, you can no, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I was going to say, like, I could share firsthand experiences. Like, I've done, we did, so we did a podcast episode um, on fighting dogs, and I shared a story of mine with Vera and Deli, the two pit bulls that you met downstairs, right? Yeah. So, those two dogs, one was my wife's dog, one was my dog, right? And those two dogs, when we first met each other, they literally, not even exaggeration, almost killed each other. That's like, 
Kieran. They got in Ugh. the gnar- two of the gnarliest fights you could ever imagine. And the scariest part about it was I wasn't even home when they happened, right? It yeah. happened for Kate, right? And she had oh to break it up. And then she called me absolutely mm. freaking out, right? Like, oh my God, like, I don't know what to do right now. Like, we got to get these dogs to the emergency vet, this, that, right? And like, I could even sit here and like, I, I, I'm i really good at, you know, suppressing emotions, right? It's a, oh, it's a great Christ. trait of mine where I can really bottle it up and let it, <laughs> <laughs> let it just like wait until it simmers over the top in some like, yeah, some like some redirected way somewhere else in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I like to use the dog trainer, I'll redirect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll redirect. <laughs> but like, I could also distinctly feel the emotions of like when I received that phone call from her. Of yeah. like telling me what happened and like just how like terrified I was in that moment, right? And that's an extreme example, obviously. Mm-hmm. But like looking at living perpet because because those were like isolated incidents, obviously. Yeah. But like looking at perpetually feeling anything even remotely close to like this is so out of control and I don't know what to do and this is a safety risk. Yeah. Um, like that. That is like something I feel like people don't realize is like what is literally going through your client's head in a lot of cases, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think of a specific instance now. I mean, I I don't have a stellar memory. I'm trying to be actually better about that. (laughs) But if there are these moments, (laughs) uh, there are these moments, I guess, that do stick out in your head. And one of them before training was we were in New Hampshire Uh, traveling with my family and I was like I want to bring the dog Uh, we couldn't have her at the condo Mm -hmm. so I found a boarding facility nearby I was terrified yeah (laughs) I I basically stayed as organized as possible I tried to keep it really really simple for them I was very clear on just She's just nervous. Like at that, I wasn't worried she was going to like attack and yeah. really hurt somebody. Mm. I just knew that she was nervous and apprehensive. She would warm up to people and be very, you know, just have one person handle her. Don't give her lots of effect, like a lots of just let yeah. her be. Um, and I came up with I would pick her up from there and take her on hikes with us because they're like, yeah, that's fine. I was like, we're nearby. Do you mind if I pick her up? We go on a hike together. So I took her on a hike with us. And at that point, I had her trained on a gentle leader. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the prong collar came after, but I started with a gentle leader and she Mm -hmm. did really well on it. Mm -hmm. I, and so I was walking around a gentle leader and somebody, we were trying to cross a path and space was tight. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, (laughs) and this woman let her dog shove its nose into her nose Mm -hmm. and she gave a correction. Honestly, she gave an appropriate like, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and the woman, she walks away. That dog, I can see why it's wearing a muzzle. (laughs) That dog bit her in the yeah, face yeah, yeah. and i'm like oh it's not God. a muzzle it's a gentle leader yeah. i'm trying to be a responsible owner and mm-hmm. walk my dog appropriately yeah. and your dog invaded my dog's space <laughs> um i just didn't see it coming and that moment i was just so anxious and so stressed and like again here's somebody where my pit bull just bit another you know yeah. according to that woman my yeah, pit bull yeah. bit her dog um so that stressful those moments every mm-hmm. time it was the vet every time i had to if I was leaving anywhere, the anxiety of like who mm-hmm. is taking care of her, sure. the instructions I would write out the most basic, you know, yeah, do not veer from the instructions. And it just, I was living in like, yeah, just try to set her up so that she didn't fail because I knew it wasn't her fault. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that was, it was it's a, a lot. lot of anxiety yeah. and I'm naturally an anxious person. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And actually, you know, what was interesting too, is I, I've always been like a, like I was a very shy child, like shy, anxious mm. in general of like safety first. Um, but my curiosity, I feel like helped me escape that because sure. I was more curious than I was anxious or fearful Yeah, and mm-hmm. getting curious about her yeah. and also having to advocate for her as mm-hmm. an owner before I was even a trainer. I was like, don't you, dare do that to my dog like yeah, yeah. i protect mm-hmm. her uh-huh. i don't really care what other you know i cared what people thought but i cared about her more yeah <laughs> yeah so it was huge for me um mm-hmm. yeah that last thing you said is really important the you, you care what people thought but like you care about her more because like that's something one difficult thing we see with clients all the time is their ability to properly advocate for their dog 
you know, like whether it's yeah. out on the walk, like getting people to stop coming up and petting the dog, right? And telling people yeah. no mm -hmm. or like advocating in the house if they have a fearful dog and they have those couple friends that come over that just like to bug the dog mm -hmm. constantly, like feeling confident enough in like, I care about my dog a lot more than how you feel about this situation to be able to advocate and step in and just tell people no sometimes, you know, yeah. and that can be really challenging, especially if you're an individual that struggles with anxiety, right? Or, uh, you or know, just being a nervous or like a shy person. Yeah. yeah or of being a non shy. Outspoken. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being you're a little like, too I permissive. Just, I don't want to upset or... anybody yes. with what I'm saying. Yeah. And yeah. I will be very honest. It's, it is a lot easier when I said I was interested in relationships always. Yeah. It is a lot easier and a more simple relationship with a dog than with people. Yeah. So it feels like it's kind of like training wheels for like advocating, speaking up sure. and like eventually people are more difficult. Uh huh. People are more difficult. Dogs are simpler. I feel like my growth has been realizing that like the dog relationship can teach me a lot about how to improve the people relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, how to be a little bit better with people and communicating and being clear and setting boundaries. But yeah. it's still tough. Well, it's you could see tough. firsthand with a dog how important it is and how simple it can be if you yes. just communicate clearly, right? So I, I think by witnessing that firsthand, that could help you be that way, you know, just bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I try to apply it to more things now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Boy, you know, I just thought of something. What would you think of? <laughs> I'm my own like version. How's that mic feeling, by the way? It feels great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not as good it's, as our regular it's ones. It's not as but sexy as the other yeah, ones. Yeah. It's not as sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been downgraded. Uh, um, but, you know, like the these moments that like... I guess more of like how yours was, was like, oh, I, we need to do something. Uh, like how I met him. Really? I mean, we knew each other from music stuff, but we hadn't really talked, talked. And then uh, he knows my, my ex fiance and I, we had two dogs. Okay. And he, he'll he always have a special place in his heart for the one, I'm sure. <laughs> one of, <laughs> the, one the, of the, the dogs? Yeah, the reason that we came to him in the first place was we had, we always had to keep the one dog away from anything right kind of the same issues that your dog was having yeah um but the the other one loved dogs so we had some friends that had another little pity and they would play together and they were like boyfriend girlfriend like loved yeah. each other but the one time that they had come over we had uh the other dog outside so they could play inside and he was in the backyard well we had the windows open and, oh, and it's just the screens, you know, right? And they were like over by the window and the, the breakfast nook area was like really low. Like the windows were low. And then <laughs> all uh -oh. of a sudden we just hear a commotion <laughs> and I look in, you know, you hear, and we see the other dog. He had halfway through the window, <laughs> was stuck Hanging in the window, the window doing this, like, <laughs> like trying to get, get at them because he just didn't like any yeah. other dogs, you know? And that was the, like the wake up moment. Cause it was like in front of our friends, you know, their dog Whoa. was right there. Like could have been real bad if he'd gotten all the way in. And we were like, Oh shit. Okay. We can't just, you know, hide the problem anymore. Yeah. So no, that, it, which it, that's it, a great way to can't. look at it is you were hiding the, you know, like Literally. all yeah. these things of like, we'll just keep the dog in the house. Yeah. Right. Like that's all you're doing like yeah. to, to everybody. You're hiding the problem at that point. And yeah. And you're managing it. And it's like, yeah, like at some point something's going to fail. Yeah, know? and it did. And then we were yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, it's funny. We laugh about something like that like now. But yeah. it's like at the time, yeah. like I'm oh, sure yeah. that was like actually terrifying to you guys. Because like <laughs> yeah. one, it's like what if this dog gets through and we have this, I mean, because they were big ass dogs. Like mm -hmm. what if we have this giant dog fight on our hands? Or mm -hmm. two, like he's breaking through the screen. Like yeah. he's halfway through it. Like what if he like severely cuts himself open? Yeah. Or like, you exactly. know what I mean? Like. There's an infinite amount of like scary situations that could play out from that. Yeah. And my friends never brought their dog yeah. back over, you know. <laughs> they were traumatized forever. And I get what? it. Did like, they play it real mean? cool though? They're like, yeah. oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. It's fine. Is he okay? Is everything okay? It's like actually yeah. we're never coming over. Yeah, this we're house. never coming Literally back never ever again. again. They never they never came back as long as we were together there. Yeah. Oh, no. no. But I mean, I could understand, you know, you bring your dog over and everything's fine like the first three or four times. And then that time you're yeah. just like, what the f is going on? You know? Yeah. So, it, yeah, those eye opener moments, though, are like what changes your experience with dogs pretty much anyway, or like how you used to do things. You're like, that doesn't work anymore or whatever. You yeah. Know? 
Yeah. And I give people a lot of credit for for asking for help <laughs> and for looking for, you know, yeah. of just, yeah, to get there and do that and say, I'm, I'm making mistakes. I, and you know, yeah. Yeah. I need help. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, I like people like me, like layman, not dog yeah. trainer. Like I never thought about dog training. Never thought because I, I grew up in Indiana. Dogs were outside dogs, whatever, you know? Yeah. And that was actually my first experience having dogs in the house. But I never thought, oh, dog training, you know, like I'm not yeah. wired how you guys are. Like you, you kind of dealt. I didn't fucking that. think dog training. I no, well, I know, I know, I know. I didn't I know. even know dog training existed until I, after I got my first. Well, actually, right before I got my first yeah. dog, um, one of the people in our friend circle was a dog trainer for yeah. a you know a boarding kennel in the yeah. area, and yeah. I was like, oh, I guess that sounds kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you I, delved into it, yeah. though. You know, like, oh, yeah, you yeah. like I wanted, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you didn't know it was your calling at the time, My but calling, yeah, see, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, see, it's it's relationships. Yes. Yeah, which I know, yeah, yeah, like dog training. I, I think about it too, of like when people say like, oh, you're a dog trainer, and people think I like click and give treats. Not yeah. that I don't, not that sure. I don't know yeah, how yeah. to do that, uh, but it, it's when the dog psychology thing becomes. Well, there's again, it's back to like the Caesar Milan thing, yeah. and I'm mm-hmm. like, it's not even really about that. Yeah. It's a, it's about just thinking about a relationship, whether it's with a dog or yeah. a person or anything mm-hmm. in general. Uh, yeah. Of the the boundaries, that the psychology, really, the structure, the boundaries. He really just changed the yeah. game on opening people up to like knowing what dog training is yeah you and know? yeah <clears throat> because we just took for granted we're just like dogs were just always there yeah. i also think the the um how do you say it the mindset about dogs had really shifted society, where old yeah. like way yeah. back when sure. a dog yeah. was a dog was was and you different. live differently with them yeah and it yeah, shifts yeah. now and we have to adapt to that and we have to adapt to dealing with people because of that shift of that's my baby yeah versus Mm-hmm. Like you said, Indiana is it Indiana? Yeah, yeah. yeah outside dog, you know. Mm-hmm. And now people, if your dog is outside yeah. for more than, gosh knows, if a husky is outside, you're cruel. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you um, um have you guys heard the uh, the recent story about that like uh, governor's dog that she like shot her dog or something? Did yes, my that? boyfriend mm-hmm. was telling me about that. No, you what? haven't heard about this. No. Okay. Well, yeah. it's, Give it it's to a me. big Please. reason. So it's a big new... deal for two reasons. Oh, yeah. go ahead. What were oh no, say? no, you go ahead. I actually, well, do you know hear where where it. is she a. a, a She's a governor or a senator or something like that. I don't right? remember. Christy Noem or something like that, I think is her name. I, yeah. I don't know. It's a big deal for two reasons. One, it's kind of a little bit of a, a, a wild story, right? Mm-hmm. That like is a little, it's pretty controversial. Okay. But then two, she is the person that's in the running to be Trump's potential VP candidate. Oh, God. Right? <laughs> so, so obviously okay. that gives just a little bit more ammunition yeah. and fuel so to the yeah. fire. She with like things. couldn't like. She figured her dog was untrainable. So, so, she so here's shot it. here's my understanding of what happened, right? Yeah, okay. So, because in in all of this, keep in mind, I didn't read. This is from a book she just wrote that came out. That's like a memoir or whatever. Like it's her life story. Oh, great. And it was a story that she shared in the book. Okay. Right. I did not read it. Right. So I don't yeah. know firsthand what she said, in it, sure. but I tried to read a handful of different articles to kind of get a feel for what happened. Okay. Um, so I could kind of try to get a little bit of like an unbiased take on things. Yeah. And here's what I, I understood. She had this dog cricket. That was a wire hair pointer, I think. I, it was either a GSP or a wire haired pointer. I'm pretty some sure. Hunting, right. It yeah. was a hunting yeah. dog. Hunting it was a bird dog. dog right. Okay. She grew up in South Carolina. Right. Or South yeah. Dakota, I think. South Dakota or South Carolina, whatever. It was like in the in the boonies. Okay. Right. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. And big hunting community. Mm. They had bird dogs. Right. And she had this dog cricket that was basically she just described like she and she was like 20 years old at the time. Right. Okay. She hated this dog. It was so difficult. It was a pain in the ass. Right. <laughs> okay. And they were a, a hunting family, right? Mm-hmm. So this dog was to be a bird dog, right? Okay. So she took the dog out on a hunt. Yeah. The the dog did horrendously on the hunt. At this mm-hmm. point, the dog's like a year and a half or something like that. Mm-hmm. Out on a hunt. Dog does terrible, just frolicking in the fields, chasing away all the birds, just ruining their hunt, this, that. Yeah. On the way home, they like stop by a neighbor's house to talk. And the dog... She loses control of the dog. The dog like jumps into their chicken coop and like slaughters all of this neighbor's like chickens, 
right? Jesus. And then when she went to go grab the dog, I guess the dog turned and tried to like redirect on redirect. her and stuff. So she took the dog home. She said, obviously, this dog can't be a hunting dog. This dog, in her opinion, was dangerous. So she shot the dog. Right? Okay. So the controversy is a couple of different things. The controversy is, one... A lot of people are saying like, okay, probably if we were to look back on things, probably this was a fine dog that was doing normal dog things yeah. that probably just wasn't a good candidate to be a hunting dog. Yeah. Does the dog deserve to die for that? Probably not. No. At least to today's standards, probably yeah. but not. But things were a little different. Right? They thought about <laughs> that. Yeah. The other controversy is that why would you shoot that you shooting a dog is such a grisly, terrible thing that you can do. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. My take on things. Right. Yeah. To, to I, it's hard to look at because, like, I think this literally happened like over twenty years ago. Right. So, like, if we look at over twenty years ago, like, I was fucking nine years old. Right. <laughs> like, I didn't know anything <laughs> about dogs. I didn't grow up in fucking South Dakota, mm -hmm. where you only get a dog to be a fucking hunting dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. like I mean, they're not pets. They're like working tools then at that point. Yeah. They're a tool. Right? They're property. I, you invest in them. And yeah. you're like, it's a dud. And I don't even differently. I don't even have the reference of like how dogs were looked at 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, I have like what my parents kind of taught me, but like I, it's, it was just such a, it's such a different world than anything we've lived. Right. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. it's tough because I don't know, like, you know, was rehoming an option at that point? Like, were they, you know, were they, did they have family dogs or did they just have hunting dogs? Right. Like it, it, I could see both sides of it, you know, like, yeah. and then from from the shooting the dog standpoint, like what's different, like shooting a dog versus taking a dog into a vet to get behaviorally euthanized, right? Like we see people do that all the time, right? And yeah. it's looked at as something different because it's like the humane way to do it. But mm -hmm. it's like, I would assume 20 years ago, living in South Dakota on a fucking farm, like that's kind of what people did when their dogs got older and were going to die. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, like, I don't know. Financially as well, different. Like, yeah. You, you, I don't know. Like, like I said, I don't, I don't know the entire story. Like I, I could, I don't understand why she I, like thought that was a good idea to like write that in her book because that obviously <laughs> I, is something that you'd kind of get a little bit torn up over yeah but like right. i think as far as the situation itself let's say she never wrote about it and it just happened i would assume probably back then in south dakota i think it was south dakota in south dakota that was a pretty normal thing to do is my guess mm -hmm. yeah i mean <laughs> yeah considering her <laughs> audience um assuming she was like yeah not worried about writing that in because they're, you know, yeah, to them, guns and all of this. Um, but it obviously it's in the book, so it's going to get out to absolutely yeah. everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, it did, <laughs> sure did. It, it is interesting, it's all to people think, are talking about right now obviously. to think about both sides. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, I it's just like it's a different world now. Like, yeah, if that happened right now in Cleveland, Ohio, people would be like, what the. F you know what I mean? Like yeah, people would yeah. be Col <laughs> freaking out about it, obviously. But at the same time, I've also shared stories about clients that I've had that have put their dogs down over the dumbest, most minor things before. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So really at that point, in my opinion, the only difference is the fact that the dog was shot, shot versus, versus injected euthanized. with a deadly yeah. liquid. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I guess. Give us your hot take, With Josh. liquid death. Like, I can't. I'm not advertising for them. Hot take. I mean, <laughs> it was your hot take. I mean, I mean, growing up, I've seen plenty of dogs die on farms. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> okay, that's I the mean, hot what? take. In what man? <laughs> I like. That's. I, I mean, you really did grow up have, in like yeah. the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Right. My uncles are dairy farmers, chicken farmers. <laughs> I've seen plenty of dogs get in the chicken coops and get shot up. Yeah. yeah. And the like, other thing, too, is like, look at, like, okay, so look at, so the e collar bands and stuff that are going on in England, right? Yes. Or they're trying to do in trying, England. Yeah. One of the biggest pushes back from English trainers, what they're really trying to lean into is the fact that if dogs go on to farmers' properties, they just get shot. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, that's what I, farmers do out there. Are you okay with the muscle stimulation? Or yeah. do you prefer they get shot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Like, yeah. But I say yeah, all of that yeah. just to say, like, I'm not 
at all saying it's like we should be going out and shooting dogs instead of like taking them to vet the vet to have it done in a different yeah. way. But like, yeah, I'm sure. just kind of saying I think it's a little bit more normal than people are thinking and people are looking at it way too much like that situation yeah. happened in the middle of downtown Manhattan or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I I mean, I don't know her situation, obviously, sure. like, but farm dogs are not really, there's like family dog and then there's the farm, farm dog. dog yeah you know and like once farm dog was getting a little too old mm-hmm. you know we all watched old yeller right I <laughs> oh mean, i was gonna say <laughs> it but yeah. i already old teared yeller. up earlier don't make him do it again yeah, yeah so <laughs> like <laughs> and, Jesus Christ. granted and that's when people say you're gonna old yeller him yeah yeah, yeah like, i've never heard it you used have as it? A, what is that an Wait, a, is that a noun maybe or is that yeah. a verb or oh, an adjective are you gonna, or you gonna old yeller him yeah yeah <laughs> oh my god but i mean that you know that's when i'm like I'm like four or five years, six, seven sure. years old, you yeah, know, yeah. like growing up that way. But, um, I mean, even, even out where like my mom and stuff, it's like the closest vet is like 40 minutes away. It's sure. like the vet comes and makes too. house calls, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's the kind of like yeah. area that Southern Indiana is still. It's yeah. just very sparse of yeah. how you take care of your pets. Like, yeah. um, you know, we never did that. We, we like when the dogs were getting older, we would take them and get them yeah, put down or whatever, you know. But um, as far as, as like a, if it's like a working dog back in the day, I yeah. mean, or probably still now, yeah. just sorry, everybody that doesn't want to think about it that way. But I mean, it's that's, a just, reality. that's just the reality, yeah. you know. Yeah. I think that's why, you know, to me, like when I started seeing it go crazy mm-hmm. and I started reading about it, I think I was just a little bit surprised that people didn't like people didn't realize that that just kind of was a normal thing. Yeah. Was slash probably is, Mm -hmm. you know? And Mm -hmm. again, that's not me here saying like, oh, it's good or bad or anything like that. I'm just saying, I think it's kind of normal. Yeah. I mean, it's just not normal in 90% of humanities. Yes. Like of the United States. In the way that 90% of people view dog ownership now. Yeah. It's it's absolutely not. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, fur babies now. Yeah, I, and it's like mm-hmm. that's not. I mean, yeah, they were they've been companions yeah. throughout history, yeah. but it's never been like, oh, you're my son. Yeah, yeah. Until like, yeah. like we're getting newborn mom. pictures taken of the dog. Yeah, stuff. just like <laughs> swaddled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's it's good. I think that you did point out that this information is out there, and of course, everyone's going crazy over it, but. Yeah. I think when you're taking information in, there's this sensationalized version of it. And yeah. I believe me, politics wise, not a fan, not, <laughs> but none of that matters. Sure. Yeah. And I can just easily judge a person based on those. But if you're critically taking in information, yeah. you need to consider context and time period and absolutely mm-hmm. how things change about what we think about things now. And I, I just think people in anything, when they're looking at a piece of information, should be taking it in yeah. much more critically than they do. And it's so emotion driven. Yeah. Now so many things are just emotion and What's shock value. What? what was her name again? Were you gonna look her? Christine at? Noem. Oh. I'm just curious how I, long ago it actually was, because it very well may have been even closer to thirty years ago okay. that it happened. Josh, can you also look up Oh Josh, you're the so, Jamie now. Josh, look look this up. <laughs> can you for look, us. The, look this so up for us? I wanted to look this up because uh, my boyfriend said something about her daughter as well. And something came out with her daughter that was just poor timing or I don't know if it was her daughter, or if it was somebody that she's working with. Was it dog related? It was dog related mm. or maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Josh oh, can get I'll have to. Anyway, I have to revisit. Do you know it how went. to spell her last name? N-O-E-M or something like that. Did you find it? Yeah, I'm trying to see like her age. <laughs> Because that will... She's older. I do. She's 52, so it's probably 30 plus. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Which honestly makes an even bigger difference, in my opinion. So whatever. Like I said, I'm not not trying to say she's a good person or anything like that or a bad person or anything like that. I know absolutely... I know dick about this person, right? Um, But I think as far as the situation is concerned, if we're saying this was like 30 some years ago, she literally lived on a farm. She needed a bird dog. This dog was not the bird dog she needed. I don't think this is that un common of a situation or an occurrence Mm -hmm. i think it's weird that she wrote about it because i think that obviously it's something you would get some heat about but at the same time 
she wrote about it and is not trying to hide it because it was at the time probably a very normal thing still. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I don't know the context of why she was sharing the story in the book. Like maybe it related to something else she was talking about in the chapter or yeah. whatever, but yeah. whatever. That's my hot take on that situation. I didn't think I was going to talk about that, but really? something somebody said, how did we get to that? Why did we start how? talking about that? I don't, I don't oh, know. No. Um, oh, because I was talking about farm dogs and stuff and like how I had outside dogs. No, but I'm I think sure. we started else. with something else. Oh. Whatever. Anyway. So there's our hot take on it. We got there somehow, and that's our hot take on it. So moving past that, where we were leading to was your dog, <laughs> your experiences <laughs> and stuff that you had <laughs> leading up to you going to training. You were talking about the emotions and stuff of having a difficult dog leading to you signing up to training. Was there like a last straw that was like, I need to sign up for training now? Do you remember? Um. So not really a last straw, but remember I told you I, so I was dealing with her behavior issues on my own, yes. working through them based on yes. what I was learning. So I was watching every trainer I could think of. I started leash training her. So I was doing all the basics of like obedience so that I could keep her under control uh, because I, I knew I could at least do that while I couldn't deal with some of the deeper stuff at that point. But it was the moving of that we're moving to Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. We're going to live in a city in an apartment. And yeah. I knew I needed more than just what I could yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm like, ooh, I need to call in the big guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So you went to Tyler, obviously. You did the board and train. You know, an, another thing that now you have the context of that you can kind of share with people and relate to people on is experiencing going through training with your dog, but past just going through training, going through a board and train with your dog. What was that like? Uh, <laughs> Interesting. It was, it was nice. It was mm. nice because we had a lot of preparation to do and it was right before we were moving. It mm. was nice to feel... I know that I did my research, so I felt really comfortable um, mm. with just that she was in a place where we could kind of kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. She was getting help and I was getting a break and the ability to kind of reset and prepare ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, in general, that was the nice aspect of the board and train. Then the go home session, I did find myself wanting more. Like what do you mean by that? longer, like lo longer, like I could have stayed, I think it was an hour, hour and a half, but they were also super great about, they gave me like a sheet, like a reference sheet mm -hmm. of like what we went over. And then they gave me a link to the videos on all the basics that she had learned. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I could watch them doing that. So I had yeah. references, reference points. They were also really good in terms of support. Like I knew they weren't just going to upcharge me tons of money because I'm like, I need help um, mm -hmm. with like. I need to bring her again. But I also knew that because she was much farther away that I couldn't just pop back and forth. Like that yeah. was my one go home lesson. So I essentially, because I took it very seriously, I essentially did my own like follow up by yeah, like yeah. when I came, when I would drive to go home to Connecticut, my mom lived in Enfield at the time. So I would like drive, I drove to Buffalo to have yeah. him board her <laughs> while I went home to my mom's that yeah. year yeah. because I didn't, again, I didn't trust anyone. And my boyfriend is like, are you serious? You're going to make a stop in Buffalo to board the dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. Yes, I am. Yeah. Funny story. We ended up going to Canada by accident when Google <laughs> sent us the wrong uh, way. We oh. didn't go under. We tried, we didn't have our passports. Anyway, he's like, this is all your, <laughs> oh, you had to bring the dog. To yeah. Um, <laughs> But to circle back, sorry, it was That's about right. the board and train process <laughs> as an owner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, I like I'm just I was starting to get really obsessed with dog training. So I just wanted more. Yeah. And I feel like I was able to ask him also for like a follow up session mm -hmm. of like, oh, so when she boarded that time, I was like, mm -hmm. I'm still having a little issues with the leash reactivity. Mm -hmm. um, like sometimes it's happening. It's not always. And then he kind of gave me like, they gave me like a tune-up lesson, which was really great. Um, so yeah, in general, it, I mean, it was great now, like having that head start. Yeah. So it removed a lot of stress for me, having the dog just know what she needed to do. And sure. then I could really just, just give me a structure and tell me what to do and yeah. I will do it. I think mm. that's great. That's great. Cause like, yeah. yeah, you were in a unique position at the time too, where, you know, because you had been learning so much on your own, like you, 
you did like it really was just kind of the kickstart for you you know like hey like do a lot of this like tedious hard work get things on the right track so I can keep doing it once I go home and you didn't necessarily need as much of the constant coaching because you understood a lot of the concepts of things yeah right the only reason I needed it was my own like obsession I don't you know yeah that is a need more give me more (laughs) keep feeding me more (laughs) no that's a that's an interesting position though you know where we talk about like with board and trains like how much follow-up support is provided with things and stuff like that and like for your average client that would not be enough because they're starting from completely green I know literally nothing about dog training right Mm -hmm. to I need to learn how to be a dog trainer where in your case you kind of knew a lot of the concepts of stuff because you were trying to do a lot of it on your own so you understood about probably the tools right you understood about the concepts concepts and stuff so um you were able to just get the dog a little bit more fine-tuned before you took over with things so yeah. that makes sense and I, I could totally see why that would be a really great experience that way from that standpoint you know yeah and it's I like how you point that out for sure it because those <clears throat> things make me think a lot about I again I'm lucky I researched I did all mm-hmm, that but mm-hmm. to think about somebody who if that was their go home like you said they're going to learn how to train their dog in an hour, you know, or they're going to learn how to handle their dog in an hour, especially if they come from really far away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you live in Buffalo, that's fine. Like, you know, yeah, but, and I know it was a difficult situation for me because I obviously didn't live there. Mm -hmm. So like an hour is like, we're going to do our best with what we can. Um, and we, we're going to send you videos like, you know, but yeah. Yeah. And I, I think being here, and seeing how much you've thought about owner follow up, how can we make it, so that dog training is just dumb easy for them. Yeah. And I don't mean yeah. dumb and like dumb, yeah. but no. I mean like yeah, just yeah. dumb it down. Like yeah. it's make easy it possible. simple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because Digestible. not again, like I said, not everyone's going to be me. Not everyone's going to become obsessed with dog training. Yeah. <laughs> they're just, they just don't want to be miserable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. true. And they're also, they're yeah. so busy. Like they're thinking about, you're sitting there talking about these complex dog things and you want them to you know engage their dog in play in this specific way every day and all that and they're just thinking about the meeting they have at work like tomorrow and Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) you know and for you i think doing the the follow-up in a way that's just very you hold them accountable you give you schedule ahead you you're giving them that support where they can keep being successful and they can keep working through like three simple things yeah get good at this this and this that's all you need (laughs) yep 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 for sure cool um so transitioning to puppies obviously so that's a lot of like where you're at currently right now as you got into the puppy raising obviously you're looking to continue pursuing you know having a successful puppy training and raising business obviously so what is it about past the you know (laughs) past the like you like helping people avoid problems later on like what is it specifically about, you know, that and the puppies that really, really gets you excited? Just their puppies and Ooh. super cute. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, you know what? I mean, obviously that you, nobody can deny that that they're is a piece of it. They're insanely cute. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> they're insanely cute. cute. <laughs> There's part of me that's a little, uh, people, I think people assume that I'm obsessed over puppies. That I'm like, oh, yeah. puppies. And I, I, Yes, I do love You're puppies. Like, and they're yeah. actually 100% correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I'm not like puppy crazy. Yeah, I get anyway, what you're saying. I understand. Um, yeah. I find molding their little minds just a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, mm. So what I'm excited about hmm, is experiences. My, um, my boyfriend's been really great talking about this with me because we talk about it with people that how do you create a person who's confident and well-rounded and Mm. can handle things that are thrown at them? Um, Experiences, right? The more experiences you have with something, the more confident you get at it. And the more curious you stay, the more you're like less afraid of new experiences. Mm. So that for puppies, like that's my exciting thing of like, I am the opportunity to give them the earliest experiences Mm. that they'll get to have. And I'm, when I'm responsible for something like caretaking, it's exciting to me to to just show them and share experiences with them that mm-hmm. I know they're going to love. Yeah. Like seeing yeah. them being thrilled to like, like I can take a three month old puppy off leash trained and we go hiking out in the middle of the Adirondacks and they're just running around, just loving it, yeah, yeah, yeah. jumping off rocks and just, and I call them back to me and they're like, they're yeah, just yeah. thrilled. You know, I can walk them through downtown and they can just lay down on a patio and just people watch and like not, 
all those different experiences of like where I live, I get to offer them, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, that's, that's really fun for me. Yeah. That's a, that is a cool way to spin it. And arguably we could all say that in puppy raising, the providing experiences as you put it is like one of the most important pieces of the puzzle, right? Mm. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing as we refer to as like environmental socialization, which is like showing your dog many different situations yeah. in many different environments and getting them used to being around them, right? Yeah. Mm. And we always say like environmental socialization is better than any type of interaction with oh, like dogs gosh. or people that you could ever do. Right? <laughs> yeah. You want to see all my puppies have a vest that's like, don't come near me yeah. i'm training yeah don't touch <laughs> please no touch no eye contact yeah no yeah. talk you know so so <laughs> what would some of your like tips be for your average let's say somebody listening to this is like getting ready to get a new puppy right yeah. or whatever you know what would be some of your tips for them from you know obviously you know crate train house break right set your rules in your house and stuff like that but when you say experiences or environmental socialization or whatever it may be what are some of your tips for them for those types of things how do they do that properly? Because a lot of people try to do that, but I think oh, they do it wrong. You know? Yes. I love this. <laughs> so environmental experiences properly. I think I want people to just observe their puppy more. Like mm -hmm. it, when they're in an environment, I want you to pay attention to your puppy and they, they walk by something and they shift a little and they they try to kind of wriggle their way behind you. They're, they're like they see a thing like a little somebody's little lawn ornament or, a you know, <laughs> and my first thing is, oh, here we have a challenge. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't I think people avoid they avoid something that makes their dog yeah. uncomfortable and nervous. Uh -huh. So I see a nervous puppy and I'm like, there's an opportunity. <laughs> um, I just, I love it. And I'm, I'm good at doing this for puppies. Am I good at doing it for me of saying I'm nervous? There's an opportunity. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I would say for people, that's a huge thing. If you had a life coach with you that could yes. then push you and be like, Hey, I see you're I nervous. See of you're that nervous. Thing. <laughs> yeah. I, you know? I see this is, hold on. Sorry. My phone just, no, you're fine. I see you're nervous. Yeah. Yeah, There's yeah. an opportunity. So I would tell people that like you see that. And what I want you to do, too, is like, don't like drag your puppy into it. Don't mm -hmm. like, you know, I've got, you know, I just gently walk towards it. I, I'm doing leash pressure. I'm doing a little bit of like, we're just going to hang out next to it. We're just going to chill. I want you to just kind of observe it, you know, sniff it out, check mm -hmm. it out and kind of be at a point where they're like, oh, I'm not going to die. <laughs> and then we walk, you know, they're like, my life is not in danger. Yeah. 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 We're all good. From this windmill little. Yeah. I had a dog that was at, it was like this lawn ornament and they thought they were going to die. Yeah. Well, that's like <laughs> so Michelle was working with that puppy yesterday. It. I don't know if you saw, but the one we were walking with through the park and it got scared of that sign. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. yes. And that's exactly what yeah. she did. She's like, oh, look, oh, oh you're scared of this thing. <laughs> just, hold on one moment. We're going to stop. Yeah. Gently, but firmly just kind of walked the dog over mm. to it, got the dog acclimated and mm. allowed it to settle down and then we continued about with the walk right yeah nice. and that is so important and it's it's a finicky touchy line because you could it almost is. argue that the reason why i say how do you do it properly is because we could say go do environmental socialization and the owner can do what we suggest and go out and about into the environment and take the dog everywhere with them and get the dog seeing all sorts of new things. Yeah. But do it if you're right doing way. that yes. without being mindful of when the dog gets scared, looking at that as an opportunity, what you're going to do is you're going to take the dog to a lot of environments. They are going to inevitably get spooked by something and then you're going to reinforce the dog running away from it. Or being nervous of the environment. Being nervous of the mm -hmm. environment yeah. mm -hmm. by when they're scared of it, avoiding those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right? you really, there's... Yeah. You have that opportunity to address yes. it. And if and, you yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Well, address it and and I think people are people are in a rush mm -hmm. and I just think you have to plan the time for the puppy too. Yeah. Of mm -hmm. like they're rushing through something, like mm -hmm. picture that walk and they're like I have 2 minutes. I'm like yeah. just please try to plan that when you do something like that and you know there's something you just take a little bit time to yes. sit with it and address yeah. it yeah mm. yeah just sit there with a the puppy let yeah. them get comfortable it's being move intentional on. about like we're going to environments to, to find the this. scary things yeah right we're going into environments yes. to find the new things that maybe the dog isn't scared of but they're a little apprehensive of or curious about yeah. or whatever it may be and you're being intentional about finding those things in the new environments and working past that hurdle and if you could do that damn i know 
even mm. if, even if you did you nothing else, just dog. just this socialization environment, ignoring a lot of things, ignoring a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you're already way ahead. And this this is good to talk about too because it makes, helps me kind of just focus my puppy program of like focus. Like if I could tell clients like three things yeah. and that's all. Like I, if they want to get into more nitty gritty, we can have conversations yeah. every private lesson with their little flash in general. Give us the three things. What are the three things? Oh, if okay. If you had to give them three things. I shouldn't have said that because I know you're going to throw it back at me. <laughs> okay. The three things. Always, always, always. Have a leash on your puppy when they are out of the crate. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I, I honestly, wish I could hit the bomb that thing. I know. That Brad <laughs> because yeah, yeah. every time I go to a private lesson, every single thing they tell me that goes wrong, I'm like, do you know what could if have prevented that? If the dog that? was on a friggin' and leash. The, and do you yeah, know what yeah. could have prevented And I give them leashes. I'm like, you have no excuse. I gave <laughs> you a slip lead. I cut the end of it. They won't get caught because they give me the excuses. Yeah, well, yeah. it's going to get caught on the end of things. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to nope. give you the perfect leash. True. Yeah. And you're going to, and leash, leash, leash. So much prevents that. Uh, the other thing I think is what we talked about, just addressing when you see a little thing like that, the environmental socialization, see it as an opportunity mm-hmm. and address it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is just schedule for puppy, just like having, having that schedule and just also paying attention to them and knowing um, that, like what their little, what they are, are needing. You, I, like I notice like when they go to the bathroom and I can just predict a lot of things. Yep. You, you remove so much mm-hmm. of the difficulty when you can just predict and you start to like get comfortable and used to what your puppy's schedule like really works out best. And I tell people to be regimented in your schedule, but also be flexible in your schedule. Like change mm-hmm. it, like change it within mm-hmm. that structure you can change it up. Yeah. But just have those basic things in place. Yeah. So yeah, like always the leash. Have a structure that makes your life easier. And yeah, the environmental, like address things where things are uncomfortable. Don't avoid them. Yeah. Don't rush through it. Mm-hmm. Just sit there with the dog and work them through it. 100%. Yeah. I like those three. Damn. Those are good. good. Boom. Boom. Real good. And just quick plug. <sighs> if you want to learn a little bit more about plug biggest do's and don'ts when you get your brand new puppy head to miracle canine training.com hit the blog link and oh. find all the do's and don'ts with your new puppy blog that you could look at <laughs> <laughs> it's really good oh that's another thing One i want to i want to i want to do a puppy guide i know i've been i've been puppy like compiling guide? notes and notes and notes and notes yeah. of just like I know we talked about like my puppy program and how I'd structure two different things mm-hmm. and anything in between the simplest of things. I just, I just want like a little pimp, little puppy guide that's got everything organized clearly. And if the owners need a more detailed reference, yeah. I've mm-hmm. got to get on that. You should do that. It's a big fat mess of notes. and You, you should actually and... start a blog, like the getting back to a website, like just start a blog to start. And instead of having a full guide, just take it in pieces, right? So like, and then I've already here's all the things guide. on the crate training. Here's yeah. all the things on this. And then mm-hmm. eventually you'll have 20 different ones that are all on raising your puppy. And that is your fucking guide, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. And then just yeah. Boom. Love it. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Simplify all my in-person stuff with clients. And then I, I like having reference points back too. Yep. I'm a reference person. I was like, if I want more, I can go find it. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Well, good chats, guys. Yeah. You got anything else you want to add in? Anything you want to say? You don't want, did you come up with a company name yet? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> Acme dog training. Acme. ABC yeah, yeah, yeah. training. Yeah. Um, do you guys have any ideas? No. no, no, no I'm not no ideas. I, it has to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one would, chat GT, GPT. Oh, my oh, god. Have them come up with one. No, I'll have them come up with my sign, and it's a dog with like eight arms, and, <laughs> or like the, the yeah. AI stuff will just come up with the most Wait, crazy what, looking logo. What is it that Post Malone used to get his name? It was like the rap name generator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's like what that. you need to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I forgot that he said that. You'll come up with something. But in the meantime, she will be posting dog training content five to seven days per week on oh. her Instagram page. You're just like shame, like What's, uh, holding me accountable. We had to talk about, to talk about yeah. how I she's to, not posting dog content. Right I have now. to exist on social media. Yes. Trust yeah. me. You got to do it. It stinks, but you got to do it. 
You got to do it. I'm terrible at it too. He yells at me all the time. Yeah. All the time. To be fair though. My, so it's my, I'm, I'm newer to Instagram actually like mm. the last four or five years. And I got Instagram because in Troy, like the small community, like so what you're saying is Instagram. you've been on it for four to five years. I think four years. Maybe. Okay. That's not, I'm me. not, well, not, uh, no, 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 no. That's not, I'm not trying to make you serious. I'm just, it's funny. Yeah. So it's four years and it, it's just like my personal thing. And yeah. it, like bit by bit have been dogs that yeah. I've, I've had over the, you know, the years. I was on Instagram in 2012. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Anything else you want to add? Wait, what's the Instagram they can find you at right now? Oh, or do you care? Or do you? Oh no, that's fine. Um, it's underscore Kyleen, C-A-E-L-E-E-N underscore. So I'm okay. just Kylie right Go now. Go there. It's she, just I'm me. I'm telling you, when this pod, this podcast <laughs> is going to come out a week <laughs> from now, <laughs> one week from now, when you go to her page, expect to see yeah. at least a couple of dog oh, training so clips. So because it's my personal. Little puppy instructional yeah. stuff. Because it's my personal page too, all of my friends are going to be like, why is she blowing up <laughs> Instagram all of a sudden? Because I just casually like, yeah. so there's, there's beautiful <laughs> pictures on there that my boyfriend has taken out in Troy of puppies and but yeah, yeah. Well, that's it's great. People personal. like seeing pictures yeah. of puppies. Yeah. I li- so. yeah. And it's only that way until you finally figure out a uh, name for your company and then make a business yeah. account. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. And I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, you know what? She, I she love, did this. Uh, I'm, my, excited. I'm excited. Yeah. No, it's, it's absolutely. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat of, okay. of that stuff. And I get it. But I also have a lot, I have a lot to offer things. This oh, he's push. doing the push. Yeah. Yeah, he's pushing off the edge right now. Yeah, yeah. See? Said, oh, I he's see she's nervous. Push. Yeah, something. she's nervous something. I see an opportunity. I see an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, Absolutely. The, the biggest thing, yeah, that he taught me is like, I would I would come in here and be like. I taught you something? Yeah, you did. You That's taught me nice. something. No, because I, I would sit there and I, I'd be like, I can't post something because it has to be perfect. Like, I want it to be the most perfect thing. He's like, just yes. freaking post. Yes. And he's right. Every time I post, so I'm like, eh, it'll be all right. It's like, get yeah. some more views than the thing I thought would be perfect. You know, it's true. Absolutely. Just put it out there. So just put, put it, it out, out there. there. Yeah. So uh, one of the things I I am trying to do, and I just, my last thing, uh, I was thinking about, I didn't discuss with you of an idea Ooh. of working with breeders because I was working with a breeder who happened to be a trainer. Yep. And having an agreement with that of like pre-trained puppies. Like I'll take that puppy and give them to the owner. Trained oh, up. I understand. Yeah. 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 That's a good so idea. that's very interesting. I think a me. lot of breeders offer something similar to not a lot. So of kind them. of Sorry. trying to, there find, are yeah. some that like they'll do. So the breeder themselves like does a little bit of training, you know, they kind of do yeah. that. And there are some that are puppy. really great. Yeah. Are there? Yeah, I don't there, know anything uh, about that world, but so there's one of the dog trainers. He got a, a little chihuahua puppy yeah. and, and the, just the way the breeder prepped that little puppy to yeah. be like solid before the trainer even got the puppy. I was yeah. really impressed. So hmm. and trying to find those kind of breeders. Cause there yeah. are a lot of breeders that only send their owners, like only like purely positive stuff. They, sure. they send them rules. Like you can't put this on the puppy and they send them little bloggy things yeah. and it's just not. Yeah. So you again, same with right rescues, connection. same with yeah, breeders. Yeah. You have to make the right yep. yeah, connection. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, I think that's a also probably a good area where if somebody can figure it out, right. You know, yeah. like, Hey, this is how we actually do it in a way that really helps people. I think that could be something that's really awesome. And I think people would absolutely pay for that if they mm-hmm. knew their puppy just had some extra skills on yeah. them, you know, They're that kind we're of really like going to set them up benefit. kind of a little bit easier yep, yeah, to do sure. that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I like it. Well, listen, uh, it's been it's been great having you out. Obviously, we got today and we got one more day with you here. Um, you, you're you're going to do well in this industry. You're very mm-hmm. inquisitive. You know, mm-hmm. you're you're seeking new knowledge. Right. And you look at things well and you have you know, you got a good personality for it and stuff. I could tell you're going to do well with engaging with people and stuff. And obviously you already have. Um, so so it's been cool having you out. We're happy to have you on the, the podcast and hopefully people have uh, enjoyed uh, a little bit of your story and how we kind of applied it to regular day-to-day things you know <laughs> you really lucked out on these last couple of shadow students you Josh, know? Oh. we don't luck out okay <laughs> you're like we're awesome. i'm just saying we're awesome so we only like, attract awesome people we attract the awesome yeah, psychologist yes. teacher last time yeah. i mean oh teacher yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah he was like, a teacher. what a history teacher that that's what he was? yeah i think so yeah. yeah see i feel like teacher those are both great ways to tr- like combine with dog training yeah yeah teacher oh, that's yeah. true yeah oh yeah okay cool That's all we got. Catch y'all in the next one. (laughs) (laughs) See ya.